Everyone trying to break 80 has heard it. The old refrain. Just 11 pars and 7 bogeys. Simple, right? We all know it's not that easy. And here's why. This is outcome-based thinking. Outcomes like score, results of a shot, or winning your match are not in our direct control. What I propose is focusing on a process inside our control. I developed an idea to get you thinking in terms of process and not outcome. This will take your mind off of your score and how you're doing relative to par. It'll let you focus on things directly in your control, taking the baby steps to building your best score. I call it the 666 sub 80 system. Six greens in regulation, six up and downs around the greens, six holes to give yourself a break. You're aiming to hit the green, not the flag. You're trying to chip it to a position to get up and down. You will make birdies, as we all do, so with six holes to drop shots on, a brain fart or two won't end your round. A double bogey can put a lot of stress on you in the seven bogey, 11 pass scam. With stress comes tension, which brings negative thoughts, defensive shots, and poor score. Remember, six greens, six up and downs, six birthday holes. We played Thai Country Club, where Tiger Woods won the 1997 Honda Asian event, 6,520 yards from the Blues. What a shot. Watching my videos, it's clear I underclub the first three or four holes. This is something to note if you find yourself short of the green often. Take one more and shoot for the middle back of the green. This was my partner for the day, Heinrich, an absolute gentleman and one of my favorites. With 218 to the pin and 240 to the back bunker, I took a 3-iron. It'll definitely carry all the trouble with a mediocre strike, but won't ever reach the bunker with a perfect strike. With the entrance to the green on the left and my tendency to fade the 3-iron, I set up well left of the green. A straight shot would give me an easy up and down, and the planned fade would bring me my reward of green under regulation. Back edge, two putt birdie, I'll take that all day. When you have an obstacle in your way, look for the shot you are sure you can pull off. I know I have enough space here for a full shot fade, so no need to lay up. Often I will take the fade route, because the big hook is not in my artillery. Know your game, play what you know and trust. Having no trust means no confidence, which means poor swings and bad shots.
How did I get so much better at the putts inside 8 feet? I bought a 4 foot steel ruler. I put it on the carpet every morning and night and putt balls down it. My goal is 10 in a row or I'm not allowed to sleep. It trains you to get the ball started on your line and will highlight an open or closed face at impact. Extra challenging is hitting the putts really softly so you can practice the feeling of those downhill ticklers. Guys, this hole is my bunny. Over five rounds here, I am two under par on this hole. The reason is simple. I am confident over the ball. There is no doubt where the ball's going. How does this happen? I know my natural shape with the five iron is a fade. I know I aim it at the left bunker, which is out of range. If I hit it at the bunker, I'll have an easy chip because I can't reach the bunker. Knowing those three things allows me to swing freely and without tension caused by lack of confidence. We only lack confidence because we lack trust. Play what you know, play what you trust, and golf will become easier than you ever imagined. This was one way to play it. I knew short right was an easy chip, so I was okay to miss it there. But a better play would have been to the back edge. It was an uphill shot. I'm going for a par 5 and 2. Why not make sure of it and hit enough club that would only go over the back edge with a perfect strike? That would take the bunker out of play and give me tons of green to work with. I should have hit a 6 iron rather than the 7. Finishing under par for the 9 got in my head. I hadn't done it in years. This is wrong think. Outcome based thinking kills your golf. The whole way around, I was thinking about the easiest way to get the ball in the hole, which is process based thinking. Now I start thinking, must make par, must make par, must make par. Look at the swing that comes out when you think of a score as your goal. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Then I put pressure on myself to chip it close because I need par. I forget about my spot and was worried more about the par. Focus on the process. The steps needed to get the ball into the hole in the least strokes. Not the score. I chose a hybrid over my 3-iron because the ball was sitting down. The 3-iron would get caught in the blades of the grass before impact, slowing down the club head and causing a short pulled shot. A hybrid glides through the longer grass with the rounded sole. I wanted a little fade into the pin, so I set up left, club face at the target and made a swing. A great little result, thank you. See, no focus on score, just the shot at hand. Treat each shot with the respect it deserves. You know the scene. You go to the course thinking, 11 pars, 7 bogeys. After 5 holes, you're 5 over par and playing catch up the rest of the way round. Or you reach your 7 bogey limit by the 13th and have 5 holes left where you can't screw it up. We don't want a defensive mindset like this. It breeds tension. With my triple six sub 80 system, you're trying to achieve little tasks and leave yourself plenty of leeway. You're focusing on setting yourself up to hit a minimum of 6 greens. With one foot in the bunker, all I was thinking about was shanking or topping the ball. We can. And look what happens. I wanted to punch an 8 iron instead, but didn't back away and do it. This is key to good scores. 
The only time you should ever swing at the ball is when you're totally committed to the plan in your mind. The hardest shot in golf is the one after a shank, and that water looked really big. The approach shots on 7, 8, 9 and 10 got into my head. I hit another Shuri, short right. And again, another Shuri. My head was fully in the way now, creating shots that I don't normally hit. This hole is dedicated to Tony Middlehurst for his reminder he sent me in a comment on a video. I split the distance into two shots, instead of brain farting, trying to claw back shots with a silly forward. This one's for you, Tony, a main man. Self-doubt and human frailty started creeping in. This is a psychological nudity laid before you. A big slice drive because I wasn't sure of the line on the hole. Be confident that you have all the information to proceed, player. Only then shall you proceed. I was at about 20% confidence over this shot, and it brought about the next shot. Looks like I contracted El Hosel. Eating them chili peppers. coming from? Oh yes, man, ball in play. <laughs> I get some back. Back to the process. I'm around the green in a regulation, 
chip it on and get the ball in the hole. I took one more club here. The upslope means the club will have more loft and come out higher but shorter. What a dream. Sunshine, bros, babes, beer and golf. And two putts for a sub 80 round. Could be worse. I forbid you for counting your score relative to par, in your head or on a card. Count your score at the end of the hole and write it in or report it to your friend as a 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. No pluses, no minuses, no circles, no triangles. No thinking about how many over or under par you are as you play. <laughs> 